welcome everybody. This is Jason and we're here for another workshop. Uh, this time I'm going to do something super basic. We get a lot of feedback about how SimPE is really daunting. I don't understand SimPE. I'm worried that SimPE will, will mess up my game if I install it. And uh, the focus of this workshop is just SimPE is a tool we use it to create things and I hope that I can assuage any doubts that you might have about it. So if you look at the resource post here or right below the the awesome cover art that I did uh, it says there's a link to mod the Sims, the Sim PE preservation project. The issue is that Ambertation has been down for two or three years, the the original site where Simpeat was hosted, so you can't even get the official version of it anymore. But because we have so many creators in the community who are passionate about modding for Sims 2, there's a Simpeat preservation project. Now, what this is, it... it warehouses all of the previous versions and it has the links to the latest version. Uh, there's a little bit of information about SimPE in the post here and then the links to all of the versions. Uh, in order to run SimPE if you work with graphics at all I highly recommend DDS utilities. Go ahead and install that. And to launch it at all, you need Net Framework version 2.0. I think Windows 10 and Windows 11 ship with 5.0, and it is compatible. But if you use an earlier version of Windows, definitely download and install this. And then DirectX 9C. This is a previous build of DirectX. And again, if um, I think Windows 10 and 11 ship with a different version of it, but this one you will most definitely need to download and install to get SimPE to work correctly. The version that I use and the version that I like the most is SimPE 75.69. Chris Hatch did a, a newer version, 77.69. I haven't had a whole lot of time to play with it, I think it's just a few minor tweaks. I asked Looney, huge lunatic, on the mod The Sims Discord, and she wasn't certain what it changed, but it does make a couple of things better. Regardless, I've used 75.69 for probably about a year, a year and a half since it's been available, and it's always worked well for me. So, moving on. Because I'm a nerd, I created a little bit of a presentation for us. So, what is SimPE? SimPE is a powerful, versatile editing, editing tool for Sims 2 package files, specifically for this file format. The package files are, well, it's something that the SimPE game, or the Sims 2 game engine can see. It was developed by Quaxi. Peter Jones, Numenor, Argyles, Pinhead, and a whole bunch of other people who are smarter than me around 2006, and it has received numerous upgrades over the years. Okay, so what are resources then? So if you imagine a package file as kind of a container, the resources are all of the things inside the container geometric data containers, texture files, behavior files, that kind of thing. The package is exactly what it says. It's the packaging and then it's the stuff inside the package that we edit. So if we open up SimPE, just like this, I'm not even going to open a package because, because we're covering just the basics today. You can see that it's split into three parts. So we've got a resource tree, a resource list, and the action pane, which by default is set on the plugin view tab. So 
if we go to I suppose we will need to open a package just to see what's happening and it happens that I have packages handy so if we look at the resource tree once you open a package it populates with all of the resources inside that package so then what does a resource tree do it filter it allows you to filter out by the type of resource so for example with this package we want to see what's happening with the txtr so we click on the txtr and it displays only the txtr resources so back to the presentation the resource list once you've filtered resources by type, the resource list, located in the upper right, two-thirds of SIMPE by default, will allow you to drill down the specific resource to edit. This part of the screen is also where you can add, remove, and clone resources. So, we we'll hop back over here, and let's see what we've got here. Okay, so we click on this TXTR resource, and we immediately see in the action pane here, in the plugin view, the plugin that we can edit. Okay, but the other cool thing about the resource tree, say I want to clone this resource. I want to add another texture to this package file. So we just right click on the resource and we can go clone in the dropdown. Or if we just need to remove the resource entirely, we can delete. We can extract this to add, to add it as is to a different package, or we can add a completely new resource. Okay, so then the action pane. The action pane, the lower half of SIMPE by default, is where the magic happens. This is a portion of SIMPE that allows you to make edits to each individual resource, create new objects, resource TGI values. TGI is type, group, instance, whoa, scan game files, and so on. The default editing tab of the action pane is the plugin view. So this is what we're looking at now, the plugin view. So if you have a package open, by default, it's going to be on this plugin view tab. And depending on the type of resource that you have loaded, it's going to give you a completely different plugin. Okay, so the quick action buttons. So now we've looked at the resource tree, the resource list, and the action pane. So now we come to these quick action buttons. Nothing special, but we can, we can create a new package, open an existing package, save, save as, close, and create a new document plugin container. I don't normally use this, but the important part here is reset layout. What does this do? Well, if your SIMPE gets messed up, if one of these pops out of the container, you can use reset layout to fix it. And I'll open a, a new instance of SIMPE to show you what I mean, because it does that sometimes. So what happens when this pops out of the frame for some reason? Whoa, what happened there? Okay, my action pane is now up here and I don't want it to do that. Okay, so I just hit reset layout. And that fixed the issue. So we don't need that second instance anymore. Okay, so the quick action buttons are located by default next to the upper menu the upper menus or directly under them. The quick action buttons allow you to save, to open, save, etc., and can be used as an altern as an alternative to keyboard shortcuts, control A and control S, control O, and so on. So if any of your panes get snapped out of place, the reset layout button can be used to quickly reset them. The tools menu. This is kind of important. It's a little bit confusing to newer folks, but it has some some cool stuff here. So the tools menu is located in the top left of SIMPE. It links to neighborhood tools, e.g. neighborhood viewer and SIM surgery, P 
PJSC tools for creating new clothing and accessory meshes or linking them to recolors. Object tools such as Hash Generator and Scene Grapher and several other types of tools. So let's have a look at that. Tools, Neighborhood. So we've got these cool features like Neighborhood Browser. Sim browser, you can get data for individual sims or sim surgery. If you have an in-game sim, you can extract that sim using sim surgery. PJSC, this is all about meshing. I don't use any of the things below here. I primarily use the, the body mesh tool for extracting and for linking recolors to meshes. Object creation, you've got object workshop. Okay go into more detail about that later and I don't really use the, those two you've got a packaging tool you've got create description which again in 15 years I've barely touched that and then object tools this is the important one so you have import semi globals Example, you're making a behave for a deco object and you want behaves from, say, a toilet, you would use import semi-globals to bring in those behaves. Then you have scene grapher. This is important if you're an object creator because it shows you how to, how each different resource links to the other resources. Hash generator. Okay, so we let's let's have a look at that right quick. So we use hash generator from the tools menu and it generates a random value for us. There's our hash generator. So we have this CRC24, which is a low range eight digit hex code. And then CRC32, this is important if you create like a lot of overlays or or default clothing I think and get this is this replaces an entire string of hex code in in your GZ pass or X mall okay and then we have fixed integrity so if you add a resource to a package for example, you add a texture or you add a material. You can fix integrity and that will relink all of the resources in a scene graph. Not super vital if you're just starting out, but it's cool to know that it's there. Then moving on, we have the extra menu. I pulled that up a little bit earlier but it has a lot of cool features that new SIMPE users can take advantage of. So extras, I don't really use the top three that much, but if you go into preferences, you have the, f the first tab of, of preferences is system folders. So what system folders does is it points to your your game data files, the ones that the ones that are installed usually in C program files or sometimes in C games. These are these are not the downloads are not they're not the things that you add to the game aftermarket. They are the direct data files to your game. So if you have a game installed, what's cool is that the newer Chris Hatch versions, the 75.69 and 77.69, they will find those automatically. I think that's available in some of the earlier versions, but don't quote me on that. File table. This is, it's essentially doing what the system folder does, but for example, it might not detect your game folder and you can you can double check to see if it's to see if it's available here for example if you have 
the what is this expansion called angels and hospitals by chris hatch or you have castaway stories or pet stories and it's not showing up in system folders you can double check here system check this is uh basically just some internal things that simpe does um you can run the check to make sure that SIMPE is working correctly, but honestly, you're probably not going to use that. This is important, SIMPE settings. And a lot of people complain, oh, well, it's got the scantily clad girl there. Okay, then use a version that wasn't created by Chris Hatch. That's all I can say about that. So here, this is important because we can change the display language of SIMPE. We can change the theme of SIMPE, which is cool. It has all of these different options as far as how SIMPE appears to you. We can clear the cache, clear the history, or reset the layout, which uh, I think these two basically just reload the file tables. They're, they're going to reload uh, everything in Object Workshop. This, honestly, I don't use it much. This, I don't use it much. At this point, most of the plugins already ship with the version of SimPE that you're using, but if you have a third-party plugin, it should appear here. External tools, ident, probably not going to use that. So. Go back to the presentation. The extra menu allows you to set preferences in SimPE. It can be used to change how SimPE looks and behaves. System folders are passed to your game data. The file table allows you to see which game data versions of the game SimPE has access to. System check can be used to automatically check the past to your game data. SimPE settings allows you to change the default language theme and so on if your quick action buttons don't appear as i was saying earlier there's also a reset layout button located here this section is also important as it links to your dds tools this is vital if you're if you want to build textures correctly uh, i had someone i believe on this discord asked me a question about about textures and they're like oh well it doesn't resize it doesn't resize in my it's only it's only showing the size that I replace at 1024 by 20, 1024 everything else is the wrong size well you're using a method that was old in 2007 you should you shouldn't you shouldn't use the default uh, replace or I, I'm sorry, import. Don't use this. Build DXT. Make sure that your DXT utilities are working. So if we go to extra, preferences, this is a small thing that I forgot to mention. Go to SimPE settings, and down at the very bottom here, you've got NVIDIA DDS tools folder. So you, in the link that I showed you at the beginning of the workshop, go ahead and install your DDS utilities and then use this thing here to go to the install path for the DDS utilities. And now check this out. This function build DXT is enabled. This is better than the default texture imported that ships with SimPE because it builds alpha channels correctly and it allows you to mess with, uh, you can set it to none so that it doesn't pixelate or sharpen or there are a lot of cool functions here. And you can, you can if you need more detail, you can select in the drop down DXT3 or DXT5 instead of whatever this defaults to if you use import for example you don't have that option you just grab the png and it is 
however <laughs> Sim PE decides to apply it. I have a question. Yes. On the build DXT, um, what's the difference between like three, five, and seven? Um, is there a, any case where you would be like recoloring something or retexturing something and want to change whatever it came with between the three, five, and seven? Yes, there are. Uh, this is well. This is probably a better question for the the object workshop, but. Yeah, we can dive okay. into it. So, so DXT one is basically the default, like the lowest possible quality of texture. It's it's optimized compression essentially. But if you need, if you want more, uh, like for example, have you ever created a darker skin in Body Shop and and you can see that the facial details are are really pixelated and just mangled and they don't look they don't look that well i've never done that but um i don't doubt that that happens that's that's because body shop is compressing the texture so a way that you can avoid that if you use dxt builder instead of just your regular texture importer you can it's going to default to dxt1 for skins so dxt3 it gives you higher detail, but it's also alpha enabled. For example, uh, well, this this uh, this quiver that I'm working on is a good example. Both uh, both of these the subsets in this mesh, the lens and the frame subsets, are alpha enabled. So if I were to build the XT and these arrows. Uh, just replace that with a with a completely blank texture. If it were set to DXT1, it would just be white. Why? Because DXT1 doesn't support alpha channels. DXT3 does. So if you if you built it as DXT3, it will be and provided that you had the TXMT setup correctly, it would be transparent. So you would just see an empty quiver. And then DXT5 is the same. It does all of what DXT3 does, but also normals. Like if you had, it, it would add a normal map. So if you have a cube and you want it to, it's just a flat six-sided cube, but you wanted it, you wanted to make it look like a beveled edge. You could do that with a normal map. Unfortunately, Sims 2 is not great at rendering normals, so it's not our normals or bump maps or uh, what have you. I don't I don't remember exactly what they're called. So it's kind of a useless feature in Sims 2. But does that does that clarify yeah. anything? Yeah. So like D the three is probably the best option yeah the i mean for maximum quality dxt3 mm -hmm. because you, you don't need that extra level of detail that dxt5 gives because mm -hmm. the game engine can't render it anyway okay well, that's good to know yeah i was like what is the point of you i never use it so. oh it's i mean it's like it's an interesting question it's just for like for absolute beginners is probably not going to come into play very oh. much yeah okay so i believe that's it for the extra menu okay so we've got the window menu we've got resource actions and we've got filter resources so the window menu let's hop back over here you can see all of these windows are selected so what it does, you can select or deselect features of SimPE that you want to show and hide. So let's say uh, I'm working with a resource, but I don't want to select the resource tree by accident, for example. Okay, so we unselect resource tree in Windows and ah, my resource tree disappeared, but don't panic. We go to window again, we select resource tree again, and it's back. 
that's just if there's a feature of SimPE that is missing, double check here. It's most likely just hidden in your window. So then resource actions. This is it is it essentially duplicates the function of right clicking on in the resource list. So it's got the same stuff. Add, extract, replace, delete, restore, clone, create resource toggle group filter. But then it's got an additional feature for plugins. Reload the file table. If you want uh, object workshop to regenerate the file table for some reason, unique instances, set TGI values, uh, just I honestly don't use this very much but and and by default this is stuck over here on to to the of the resource tree these two they're but they're just kind of pinned to the sidebar and then under resource actions you have filter resources which is kind of a cool thing oh um, I, I honestly don't use this this part of CMPE very much. But a thing about resource actions, this is this menu is dynamic, meaning depending on the type of resource you have loaded, it it varies. For example, if if I have a neighborhood file loaded the delete sims func feature will be will now be enabled why because because it's recognizing you you can basically manually delete sims from your neighborhood um it's enabled because you're now selecting the correct resource type to use this with and it's cool because you can you can it zips out the sim file in the neighborhood and it also zips out the character file from a separate folder so it's a really handy feature if you're trying to clean up a neighborhood for from corruption or whatever okay so let's pin that back there so the window menu allows you to show and hide various components of simpe if for example you open a new instance in simpe and can't see the resource list you can check the the window menu to see to get the resource list to reappear Resource actions. Resource actions is pinned to the resource list by default. Once you've expanded it, it has a dynamic functionality based on the package that's currently open. I, I would say that's not super accurate. It's based on the resource that you're currently looking at. Filter resources is pinned on the resource menu or on the resource list by default. It allows you to search for resources by group number, instance number, etc. Then the resource tab. This is cool. So here you have you have the resource selected in the tree and in the resource list. So from plugin view down below, you have a whole bunch of these funky tabs that that have different uses. So from plugin view, we're going one over to the resource tab. This instead of it's not it's not dynamic. It doesn't depend on the type of resource that you have loaded. It just has a simple type, group, instance high, and instance value that make this resource unique. What is type? Type is it's a new it's a hex value that the game recognizes okay all of the all of the for example txtr have this type value what is the group value the group value all of the txtr and well in this example that are in this package all of the all of the uh, everything except the collection in this package is going to have this group value because it is unique. Instance high is 
it varies from resource to resource, but it doesn't it doesn't super matter for this. And then instance. Instance value, this is the unique identifying feature of this resource. It only this resource within this package is going to have this instance number. Oh, a thing that I forgot to mention about group, group can identify what type of, or, or I'm sorry, what, what purpose a resource has. For example, if you, if you were to select type here uh, for the little icons, like the, the default icons for nightlife and apartment life and all of that, and then the, the custom ones that we create in BSOC, you would have to select type and then that specific group value in order to enable that icon. Okay, so the resource, the resource tab can be found to the bottom left on the action pane. Clicking the resource tab switches the action pane over to, from the plugin view the default dynamic editor to the resource editor where you can edit the TGI values of the selected resource. Okay, the object workshop tab. Let's go to object workshop. Okay, so one of the very first things that you're going to learn as a Sims 2 creator is how do I create a new object? The, the easiest way and the most reliable way to do that is with this tab, the Object Workshop tab. You can open to select, to clone from an object that already exists or create a recolor from an object that already exists, or you can start to load the file table and Clone a re clone an object from the existing objects that is going to pull from the game data. For example, let's go electronics, audio, and this jukebox, for example. So we go, we've we open it, and then the next step will be we select it from the list, then we go next. Here, in this dropdown, we have two options. If we just want to create a simple recolor, a color extension package, we would select a recolor in the dropdown, or we would clone. And then we just follow the instructions to the end for either, either the clone or the recolor to get the new thing. The Object Workshop tab located to the lower right under the action pane, default plugin view to object workshop, a plugin that allows you to create new objects and recolors. Okay, and finally, a lot of newer tutorials don't cover this because it is a little bit advanced, but let's check out the finder tab. What does the finder tab do? Well, it has a lot of cool features. What it's doing is essentially scanning your game data folders for specific things. And as an example, let's just grab this text here, bar stool value, hop back to the finder tab. So let's say I need to find a scene graph research, resource. This is something like Okay, something that makes an object appear the way that it is in a game, in game. Match, let's just paste bar stool value. And here in this dropdown, we can, we can select from GMDC, TXTR, LiPo, uh, TXMT, Anim, GMND, or we can just go all. So what happens when we go all? It's going to take a bit because it's scanning a whole bunch of resources. It's looking at the game data from all of your folders. 
a lot of people don't know about this, but it's a cool feature. For example, if you're a defaulter and you need to find a default mesh that you're going to replace or something, or a default TXMT or a default TXTR that you're going to replace with, with a new material or a new texture. This is a handy feature to know about. So it's basically looking through all the downloads, looking for... Not, not the downloads, the game data, where game your game data. is okay. installed. Okay. It's, it's, see, it's, it's scanning all of the, like, Sims 0, Sims 1, Sims 7, Sims 13. It's scanning all of those, the same in object folders from your game data. But for all of the versions too, for for Bon Voyage and for Apartment Life and for it's scanning all of that right now. This is why it's it's taking a while because because I told it I told it don't filter by type, scan for all types. So any any scene graph resource that has bar stool value in it is going to retrieve. Ninety five percent. Come on. And it used I don't know what the situation is. It used to be really whiny, like it would it would give me a pop up error every thirty seconds that I don't even recall which type of error, but but yeah, it's a lot less whiny whiny now for some reason. I think maybe the that was resolved and it no longer does that in the the newer one the 77.69. Hey, we're done. Okay, so you can see it's pulled all of the scene graph resources with this name. So we've got all of the TXMTs for the default bar stool. For for the, the the I'm sorry the value bar stool, it's got all of the GMDCs, all of the GMNDs, the CRES, the SHPE, the TXTR. It's got all of that information. So then you can double click on any one of these, and it will take you in the resource tree. It will take you right to that resource in the game data. So let's see what this looks like in the plugin view. And yep, that is a regular looking TXMT. So that's a handy feature. I've never even known about that. So thank you for yeah. letting me know. And there, there are, uh, let me see, object search. Oh, this is cool. You can, it's kind of like the, an object workshop where you clone an object by the GID, but here you you can just, you can search for an object by the GID. And it's got all of the regular arguments, the equal, start with, end with, and then name map search. I don't use that very much. I don't know what it's for. The STR search, I don't use this much, but I imagine it's, for example, if you're looking for a specific action string or a specific anim string. Property set. This would be for searching GZPS. I don't use it very much. And then TGI search. This is this is the TGI. So tie, you can search by a specific type group, high instance, or regular instance. Name ref search, I don't use that. And then scene graph search based on, you can search the game data scene graphs based on a value. And that's pretty much it. And in the presentation it says, 
The Finder tab, located on the bottom right below the Action Pane, switches the Action Pane from Plugin View to a separate tool that can be used for searching resources in your game data, a great tool for defaulters. And that is it. Mm -hmm.